So let me ask you this. Have you ever experienced a creative block in your artistic journey? Everybody should be saying yes, because we've all been there. Sometimes, or a lot of times when we draw or paint, we really don't know what to do, or we feel like we need to create something. And then when we actually sit down, we don't really know what to put on the paper, on the canvas, traditionally or digitally. And it can get kind of disheartening almost. And then you've been practicing all this time and you just don't know what to do. So in this video, I'm introducing the concept of an artist block and I'm gonna to try to explain how it can affect creatives of all kinds. So it's not just we as concept artists who like to draw and paint, but it can affect musicians. I mean, you've heard the term writer's block. Basically anybody that creates something and we know that we have ideas. We know or we think we know about the good ideas that we have, but we just can't get it down. All right, so some of the common symptoms and causes of artist block can range from self-doubt, comparing yourself to others, and burnout. And burnout is something that we have all faced. Me being in the industry for over a decade now, I, I can tell you that burnout is a real thing. And no matter how much you love your job, no matter how good you are at it, there's gonna be time or times when you feel like you can't go on and it's becoming monotonous and you just have to get away. That's why we always love the vacations we take or however else you alleviate stress. Okay, so let me, let me talk about the first thing and that's self-doubt. Self-doubt is not only destructive, but we, we experience it when we're not getting the recognition or the, I guess you could say the, the praising that we think we should get or that we deserve, or we're just not getting better. And being a creative, an artist, a musician, a writer, a sculptor even, there's gonna be times when no matter how much you're practicing, you just feel like you're not getting any better. And I just want you to know that it does get better. You have to break through those barriers. So when, when you see artists that have become successful and that have had those breakthroughs, it's because they completely ignored the self-doubt. It, it's natural to doubt yourself, okay? But it's actually, you need to turn it around and view it as a good thing. Imagine if you never doubted yourself. You would have no frame of reference on what is good and what is bad. Because in my line of work and in my opinion, to just get better at something, you have to get your butt kicked in order to get better at it. And maybe some of you or a lot of you will disagree with that, but in my humble opinion, you have to get destroyed emotionally and physically in order to rise above it. Okay, so th think, about, think about UFC fighters, okay? Whether you watch it or not, takes a lot of skill to do what they do. And those that lose their rounds, lose their matches, regardless of their, like their physical prowess or their agility, when they lose, they take that with them and it's fuel, it adds fuel to the fire. So think about being an artist and you're not getting better at shading or you're not getting better at line work, line quality, line weight, all of the line stuff, okay? Um, you know, it just comes down to, are you going to keep doing it or are you just going to wallow in the fact that you're not being good right now? Because let's face it, being an artist, it doesn't matter how good you get. It's never going to stop because there's always something to learn. So if you have that mindset, like, you know what, I've been in a rut for three months and I'm not getting any better, but if I keep going, maybe the fourth month, I will get better and I'll have that breakthrough, which is why it's really important to have a routine when you're doing this stuff. Uh, stuff as in anything artistic or creative. Okay, and th the other thing about self-doubt is when, when you're drawing and you're looking at your artwork and going, you know what, I'm kind of good, 
but I've just stayed there. Like I'm stagnant and I think I've reached my ceiling. It can be kind of depressing because you see other artists around you getting better. I saw it in school. You know, I, I saw both when I was a, a student and also when I was a teacher. I saw students come in that were very green. Okay, never, they have never drawn anything in their life. And if they have, it was a stick figure. And then I had students that were, that had natural talent and they could hold a pencil and glide that pencil across the paper and they were just naturally good at it. But something happened because in the four year time, as in, you know, getting your degree or five years, um, you start to see those artists that couldn't do anything actually surpass the artists that were pretty good at it. And it's because the original artists, their drive to succeed far outweighed the artists that could draw a little bit, but probably felt like, well, I just reached my plateau. I'm not going to get any better. Might as well just do what I can with what I got. And that, and that mindset is what, it's what makes you settle. Okay. So everybody that's listening right now, if you are one watching me draw this, hopefully you enjoy the creature that I'm drawing, but two, um, if you're one of those artists that just feels like you're stagnating and, and you're, you really have that self doubt, just know that if you keep pushing, you're going to make it. It's just a matter of how much you want it because at the bottom line is this, you either like the idea of being an artist or you actually like the art, two different things. And any of you listening to this right now, you fall into one of those categories. You like the idea of being able to draw awesome stuff, or you actually like taking the pencil and drawing the awesome stuff. Okay. So just think about that for a while and, and kind of do some soul searching. The second thing I want to talk about, and this is one of the biggest challenges of uh, artist block is comparing yourself to other artists. Now there is a healthy dose of comparison. Okay. I do it. I still do it. I've been drawing all my life and I still compare myself to artists that I admire and that I think I can learn from. The healthy dose is this. When you're trying to learn art, whether it's painting or drawing or sculpting, whatever you're doing, cherry pick the good things that other artists do that you admire and try to incorporate that somehow. Now, if you incorporate that into your own work, having all those little tidbits that you've collected over the years, over the months of the years, they all form into not only your own style, but your own way of, of thinking about art. Okay. There's a lot of different references out there that you can get this. And that's another rabbit hole that I don't want to go down right now, like with the whole reference thing. But when you compare yourself to other artists, if they're well-established and they've been in the industry for decades and they've just done awesome stuff for movies and games, and you haven't done anything, that doesn't mean you can't do it. And that doesn't mean you won't do it. All right. You, you can compare yourself so that you have that benchmark to know what your stuff has to look like in order to get those jobs that you want. That's where comparison is healthy. And I feel like a lot of students in school compare themselves to their classmates, which is the worst thing to do because you're only comparing yourself with a handful of students. You're not comparing yourself with the people in the industry that you're going to be competing with once you send your portfolio out. Okay. So think about that. So we talked about self doubt and we've talked about comparison. The other thing I want to talk about, this is actually, this affects our mental health just as much as anything else, if not more, and that's burnout. All right. I, I cannot tell you how many of my friends in this industry have just suffered from burnout. And I mean, call it, you know, crunch week, crunch hour, um, crunch time, whatever you want to call it happens to all of us. You know, a company gets the, the go ahead for a big project. And all of a sudden the, the due dates nearing whether or not it's a game release, um, you know, burnout happens when you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Even if you're doing it at a high level, you're getting paid well and you love doing it. There comes a time when you just need that mental breather and that's okay. That's why I'm a big advocate for 
uh, companies that really strive to help work-life balance for all of their employees. They understand it, okay? And it's something that cannot go overlooked. So when, you're, when you feel like you're burning out, it could also be that you're not improving and you're burning out trying to learn new stuff. What I suggest there is instead of just downloading like dozens of tutorials and spending your money on all that stuff, just dedicate yourself to one, maybe two skills or tasks that you really want to get better at. And if you compartmentalize that one step at a time, you're gonna get really good at one thing. And then when you move on to the next, those skills that you learned prior are going to fold into what you're trying to learn this time or the new thing. Because I think a lot of times artists will skip around. Like, and, and I remember when I started out in this industry, I wanted to do everything. Okay, yeah, my specialty is creatures, but I was obsessed with like props and weapons and, and vehicles and environments and all of that stuff. And then I had to take a step back and go, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hone my skills in creature design, not drawing well, creature design. Because if my design skills become better, then my drawing skills will hopefully coexist with that. Okay, so if you're suffering from burnout, trying to learn new stuff, just dedicate yourself to one or two tasks that you really want to learn or not tasks, but I'm like skills, dedicate yourself to the skills that you want to learn. It's much, much easier. And if you give yourself a schedule for that, you're going to learn not only more, but you're going to learn faster also. And those skills bleed into the next thing you want to learn. It's like a, it's a nice little snowball effect. All right. So, um, you know, some practical tips, and this is something that I've been, I was just touching base on, all right, taking breaks, seeking inspiration, and trying new techniques, okay? Even if you're an old dog, you can learn new tricks. That's so cheesy to say that, I know. But you really can. And it's just the point of how, how much you're willing to learn. Because a lot of times a breakthrough happens when you take a step back and learn something new. That's the craziest thing. It's like uh, artists that have traveled the world become better artists. And they become better artists because their eyes are open to fashion, to landscapes, to different people in other parts of the world so that when they come back home and they become grounded again, then they can start incorporating all the things that they learned, fashion and, and just the environments that they're in, the atmospheres, the ambiance, all that. Okay, taking breaks is huge for artist block. It's huge because if you don't take breaks and you're sitting there frustrated and angry and you feel like you're not getting better and you rip up your paper or you just want to go play a, you know, a first person shooter to take out your angst, you're not helping anything. You're not helping yourself. Okay, take a step back. I have to take a step back still. If I'm drawing a creature and I I'm kind of frustrated with it or if I'm designing something for a client and I know it can be better and I just get mad at myself for you know not researching just a little more I take a breath step back I go outside I go for a walk and then when I come back with a fresh set of eyes fresh brain sometimes I'll just sleep on it you know that, which is why I don't like working late in the evening unless there's a deadline that just has to be met the next day it's one like I used to be an advocate for working late because you tend to think cooler well you tend to make up cooler stuff when it's late at night which is true but the way you design it sometimes is not up to par because <laughs> then when you draw the stuff and then you wake up the next morning you go what was I drawing or what was I thinking all right uh so seeking inspiration is kind of what I was talking about before with comparing yourself to other artists it's um, that there's inspiration that you can seek in many places. For example, the Discord that I run, Creature Design Workshop, which you should check in the, the link in the description below. We have many channels dedicated to inspiration, you know, like mammals, dinosaurs. And one of the things that helps us creature designers is plants. Like plants, 
especially exotic ones, they look crazy. Especially if you've never traveled before and you don't know what's out there. You know, you go to some tropical rainforest and you see these flowers that just look like a creature. They're so much fun to draw and they give you a lot of really cool ideas. So seeking inspiration, some stuff like that's great. So in the Discord, we have a lot of, uh, it, it's bustling. So people are posting inspiration all of the time. We got dinosaurs, we got dissection, birds, mammals, aquatic stuff. And, you know, like, um, what should I say? Uh, aquariums, all that kind of stuff. All right, and then the, the other thing I wanna to talk to about is trying new techniques. Yeah, we are stubborn. Artists are definitely stubborn. So if you feel like you're burning out, try something new. It's not just with artists either. It's with whatever you're doing. If you're a boxer, if you do BMX biking, just try something new, try a new trick, try a new combo. You know, if you're a dancer, try a new move. It, you know, you can get burned out no matter what you're doing. All right, so just to touch base on some of the slumps that I've had in the past, it seems that my plateaus happen about once every three years. Once every three years, I get to a point where I tell myself, okay, I learned this new technique and it's actually working well. I'm getting newer clients based on that new technique, but I'm not going anywhere. Okay, so this is where I wanna keep the momentum going of learning. Right, so learning and allowing yourself to be open to new experiences and new art, which is like the equivalent of going to the museum, you know, an art museum and just looking what's out there, looking at the different paintings from old masters. It's so inspirational. It's timeless. You'll, it never gets old. doesn't matter how good you are right now, drawing or painting. Just look at the old masters. Look how they did it without Photoshop. Okay, without control Z, anything. Um, so like every three years, I, I suffer from these old plateaus and I'm at the point of my career now where I'm, I'm pretty happy with the style that I have, but now I'm venturing into new territories. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm gaining momentum with my environment stuff, which is something that I always wanted to do, but I was too stubborn to do it. And then I was asked to do it and it forced me. And I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna take that leap. So those of you listening right now, take that leap. If you're suffering from burnout, artist block, you just can't think of anything. It's not, it's not that there isn't anything to draw. It's just you're not looking in the right places, which is why I, I implore everybody to look at reference, okay? My Creature Design Workshop, if you wanna sign up for that, you want to learn how to design these things from scratch. No skill level would skill level required. Check out the links in the description below. Signing up early, is, which is usually you know between the first and the fifteenth of the month, so it'll guarantee you a seat in the following month. Uh, we do four fun weeks of creature design, and I teach you the basics, the very very basics of reference gathering choosing your favorite animals of earth so you can use that as influence and reference. And then you design something that you are proud of at the very end of the workshop. Okay, we have student samples in the Discord. The Discord, Creature Design Workshop Discord goes hand in hand with my workshop. So that's what it's in. And if you wanna go a little deeper than that, okay, I bring my teaching experience to helping in my mentorship for people that actually want to learn how to draw better. They want, to, they want specific skills learned for their art, whether it's drawing, marketing, or painting. I'll bring that into the fold too. And if, you, and if you want to join my mentorship, please do not hesitate to, to contact me. You can DM me on the Discord. You can email me at bobbyrebholtz at gmail.com. And you can also see it on the Creature Design Workshop website. So there's many ways to get a hold of me for that. What I want all of you to do now is I want you to go down to the comments and give some tips for fellow artists about what has helped you in the past or currently helping you with your artist block. What helped you get over the hump? What helped you learn new skills? And because I love reading that stuff and, and I do encourage you to join the Discord too because we have a lot of beginner artists in there that really want to learn how to 
become better at their craft because we've all been there before. Okay, so if you enjoyed today's video, I encourage you to like and subscribe and especially comment because I want to hear what everybody is thinking about artist block because I know all of us have suffered from it. We have all suffered from it at some point or another and multiple times. So thank you again for listening. I hope you enjoyed the little critter drawing on the screen there too. And I will see you on the next video. Later.